is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Christmas. of the season game two between the Brewers and the Reds the Brewers won game one last night and there was plenty of excitement and it started right away in the first inning we know what Chris Carter can do with the bat but what about the glove turning the Brewers second triple play of the season getting Joey Votto to line out steps on first gets the other out there at second and Chris Carter impressive the second triple play of the season the eighth in Brewers franchise history. Here at Miller Park, I'm Sophia Minner, and tonight's starter, Taylor Youngman, was impressive in his rookie season last year. He made 21 starts and won nine of those, but his sophomore campaign got off to a rough start in April. He started off 0-4, the earned run average nearly 10, so he was sent down to AAA Colorado Springs at the end of April, struggled there, and had to go all the way back to the drawing board. Spent a stretch in the middle of June in Phoenix, just working on mechanics where things really started to click for him, and he got back on track in AA Biloxi with a 3-4 and four record and the earned run average much better at 2-5-1. So Youngman came back up to the big league team. He's made two relief appearances, and now he's very anxious to get a second chance as a Brewers starter. I think I take it just as another start. Um, you know, it is another opportunity to, uh, to show that I can throw at this level. I think I, I proved that last year, but uh, maybe as a reminder to, to, <laughs> to everyone that I can do it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to get back out there, uh, back in the starter's role where I want to be. Um, yeah, so I mean, it'll just be nice to get back out there. Youngman did make two relief appearances for the Brewers. Two innings pitched here for him. His last start here in the big leagues was April 28th against the Chicago Cubs. So as we go up to our game announcers, Brian Anderson and Bill Schroeder, guys, you know he's anxious. He's been waiting for this opportunity. Had to go all over to get back here, but he feels confident about where his stuff is, and he's going up against an opponent he had success against last season. Well, you're right. The Cincinnati Reds are that team for Taylor Youngman. And, Rock, this is a guy who's about as competitive as it gets. you got to remember, he was a first round draft pick. He was the Golden Spikes Award winner at the college level. He's done it at a very high level. He has looked like he's been ready for this stage, but then those mechanical flaws that showed up. So what kind of Taylor Youngman do you think we're going to see here tonight? Well, and again, I mean, he did throw pretty well in the tail end of his minor league experience this year down in double A. Tweaks and mechanics, and I think uh, what we saw from him out of the bullpen, very good, very similar to the stuff that he showed the Cincinnati Reds last year, August 28th, a year ago, six innings, no runs. Well, notice the curveball. He's getting ahead, throwing the curveball down out of the strike zone for the strike three, but uh, down in the zone with the fastball as well. So 2 0 against the Reds in his career and three starts. He's only allowed four earned runs in that stretch. We'll see what he's got today. Well, we'll check in on the home run race in the National League. Chris Carter is right there in the picture. That's coming up next as we make our way to first pitch at Miller Park.
Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. And by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. Saturday night, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the Art Museum, looking fine as always. And just a few miles from there, we're at Miller Park, and we are excited to see if Chris Carter can win the National League home run title. He is two off the lead right now. Carter trailing Nolan Arenado of the Colorado Rockies. Arenado hit another one. He's at 40 on the season. Carter with homers in back-to-back -back games. And now at 38, tied with the Cubs, Chris Bryant. 24 of those for Carter, by the way, coming at Miller Park. And he's in the lineup, and we're ready to play ball. It's the Red Legs and the Brew Crew. Lineups, first pitch, coming your way next on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Tonight's broadcast on Fox Sports Wisconsin, presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. The 6'6", Taylor Youngman standing tall on the mound and ready to get another big league start. Might get two here prior to the end of the season. Brian Price and the Reds. And year number three for Brian Price right now sitting in the last place spot in the division. The lineup today, courtesy of Potawatomi, it is Peraza, Shebler, and Vado. In the middle goes Duvall, Phillips, and Suarez. Hernan Iribaran, Tucker Barnhart, and Dan Straley round out the starting nine. Youngman is ready to go. Home plate umpire Adrian Johnson says play ball. And off we go at Miller Park tonight. Beautiful night for baseball here. And the roof is all open. And the first pitch is in there for strike one. Well, nice opportunity for Taylor Youngman. He's going to get this one, maybe another one. We'll see. It's making his sixth start of the year. Little ground ball to Carter. And Youngman is there for the hookup. And Peraza is retired one away. That's how the night begins for Youngman. Well, when Youngman's on, ground balls are going to be abundant. Let's check out the Brewers' Menards defense. You got VR, Arcia, Jeanette, and Carter. Same. Infield is last night. You got Braun. Michael Reed gets a start in center field with Domingo Santana out and right. And Manny Pena calling the signs for Young when they work together down in the minor leagues. Well, what a game Chris Carter had yesterday. Not only had a home run, also drove in a run with a ground out. And then, maybe most importantly of all, he started a triple play with a line drive catch 
off the bat of Joey Votto. First inning triple play. The Brewers turning their second triple play of the season. Those are rare birds. That was fun to see last <laughs> night. Yeah, Reds are running on a 3 2 pitch. Votto lined out to Carter, and it couldn't have been any easier. Step on the bag and throw to second base. Scott Shebler flies to left. Braun was way back. That is going to fall fair. A base hit. Shebler on his way to second. He'll stop and retreat to first. And a good throw by Ryan Braun. And not a lot you can do about that. That one just inside that left field line. Well, Taylor Youngman, it's all about location for him. This is a cut fastball that kind of stayed on the outer half of the plate. It looked like Manny Pena, that's where he wanted it. And Chevrolet able to dump it down the line. Good throw from Braun. Holds Shebler to a single. And here is Joey Votto now. Joey Votto comes in at 319. And he swings at the first pitch. A high drive to center field. That is way back. And it is gone. A home run. So Votto wasting no time and the Reds have the early lead tonight as Youngman gives up a two run blast home run number 26 for Joey Votto uh, just so much more aggressive here in the second half and the numbers bear it out. You know the big batting average he's got now 92 RBIs on the season. And that's not where Taylor Youngman can throw pitches he can't get him up in the strike zone and that's end what was happening to those pitches early in the season in the month of April. Votto takes it out of here off the batter's eye. Now no hitter has had a higher batting average in the major leagues than Joey Votto in the second half. Hitting well over 400. With some power. Two nothing Cincinnati. And Adam Duvall now the Reds top home run hitter. It's been a much quieter second half for Duvall compared to the first half. Thirty one home runs on the season. Duvall made his first all star team this year. Much better first half than second half. I think maybe the league has figured him out a little bit. And it's hard for him to be able to continue what he did in the first half, though. He was red hot. Now only eight second half home runs for Duvall, but he's sitting on 92 RBIs. Got a chance to drive at 100 this year with eight games to play. That one's in there for a strike, and it goes to three and two. Hey, the ball with 92 RBIs. I gave Vito a few too many. He's got now 89 RBIs on the season with that two run homer. Couldn't get this guy out in the first half. Duvall's 92 RBIs this season are the most by a Reds batter since Jay Bruce had 109 in 2013. Bruce now a member of the New York Mets. Things have not gone smoothly for Jay Bruce in New York as Youngman issues a walk and Duvall is aboard. Well in case you missed it yesterday one of the great moments of the season it was in the first inning two on nobody out Davies on the mound and Votto lines out with the runners on the move turned out to be a three six triple play I scored L three six in my own book and yeah, both runners. Uh, had advanced all the way to the next base and that's about as easy as it gets for a triple play got Davies out of a jam. Right, what are the odds too that Zach Davies would be on the mound for both triple plays this season. The fact that you even get two triple plays <laughs> is rare enough but then Davies is on the mound first pitcher to be on the mound for two triple plays in a season since Mark Burley Turn the trick back in 2006 at pitching for the White Sox. Yeah, there's only been four triple plays in the National League. Brewers have two. Phillies and Nationals each have one. 
Brewers with a nice comeback win yesterday. Ryan Braun drove in a couple of runs to put him ahead. Phillips takes a ball outside. By the way, Davies is going to be shut down for the rest of the year. He had uh, one start remaining, but Craig Council and company deciding there's nothing more to accomplish for Zach Davies. So his season is over. We'll try to catch up with him on the road trip and hear his thoughts about the season. That was news to Zach, too. He didn't find out until after the game yesterday. He was assuming he had one more. And it was a bit of a quick hook by Craig Council taking Davies out of the game yesterday after five innings. Had given up three runs. Of course, uh, at the time, it looked as though it was more of a situation to provide some offense. David was looking to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Went to a pinch hitter. Now, makes a little bit more sense. Well, I got a visit to the mound, a quick trip by the catcher Pena. Two and one to count on Brandon Phillips. One out, two runs are in on a two run homer by Votto. And that's a fast ball. Able to check a swing, and the count goes to three and one now. Yeah, much better cut fastball that time. Kept it down, and Votto, or I should say Phillips, able to hold up. Really not able to really command that curveball quite yet. That's a key pitch for him. If he's not able to throw that for strikes, it's just nothing but fastballs. Well, I would imagine the nerves are flowing for Taylor Youngman. He knows his opportunities in the big leagues are running out. Don't know how many chances he'll get, but he knows this is a significant opportunity that he wants to take advantage of. And he's earned that spot. He pitched well in double A. As Phillips lines one to left field, Braun is there, has to turn the glove over to make the catch. Long throw to first base, and Duvall is back. So Phillips lines out for the second out of the inning. Well, that ball had some carry on, almost handcuffed Braun. Now he came in hot. He came in very quickly. He was playing deep out there in left field. Well, just kept, uh, didn't really sink a whole lot and finally able to haul it in. Those are tough at times, those ones right at you. So two gone, and here is Eugenio Suarez. Suarez with 20 homers on the season had a hit last night in the ninth inning Tyler Thornburg would nail down the save however he's been impressive as well back to back nights for Thornburg with saves gives him 13 on the year. Youngman 0 and 4 and 8 3 4 ERA seven games and five starts at two relief appearances prior to this start tonight bounced from the big leagues to triple A and then sent down to double A Biloxi he was actually the pitcher of the week one week in the Southern League so that's kind of where he got it together but rock that came after a bounce down to Triple A Colorado Springs and then a shutdown. They actually stopped him down, get him a mental break, a mechanical start from scratch. Fix. Yeah. Just kind of break it all down and start over. And one of his two relief appearances came in Cincinnati against the Reds. He threw a scoreless inning. One and two the count, runner at first. And a curveball misses. Just can't find it. You know that the delivery that very unorthodox delivery that Youngman has sometimes can result in losing your command losing your release point what makes him really tough to hit which is that unusual delivery sometimes makes him very inconsistent. Here's a two two. This is inside three and two now. Now Youngman's only twenty six. Was drafted in 2011. That was the year the Brewers had two top 15 picks. Youngman was 12, pick number 12 that year in the first round, out of the University of Texas.
He was the pitcher of the year his last year in college. They fly ball into left center. Braun is calling. And the first inning comes to an end. A shaky start for Youngman. Let's hope he gets settled in here now. Two nothing Reds on a Joey Votto home run. Two run homer, his 26th of the season. Council's crew will have to play from behind to start this game tonight offensively. And Council's batting order tonight he's got Jonathan VR back in the leadoff spot, Scooter Jeanette, then Ryan Braun. It goes Carter, Santana, and Pena in the middle with Arcia, Reed, and Youngman rounding out the starting nine. And that lineup rock will face Dan Straley. Who pitched a beautiful ball game against Milwaukee and Cincinnati a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, he's been real good. He's the Reds' version of uh, Zach Davies. He's been a nice surprise. Really picked him up and really didn't know what they were going to get out of him. A 13 and 8 record and a 383 earned run average. 2 and 0 in three starts against Milwaukee. Straley has reinvented himself as a member of the Cincinnati Reds. They are a big swing and a miss. Jonathan comes in batting 281. He is tied with the Reds Billy Hamilton for the National League stolen base lead. Hamilton is not playing. He's out with an oblique injury. And VR chases off speed pitch and down he goes on strikes. Well, check out the Reds. Menards defense tonight. The ball Shebler and Ira Barron in right field. Ira Barron the former Brewer. Out in right field, Suarez, Peraza, Phillips, and Votto, and Tucker Barnhart doing the catching tonight. Well, Joey Votto with a two run home run to give the Reds the early lead tonight. Goes from lining into a triple play to a two run home run in his first at bat in the first two games of this series. Scooter Jeanette, Cincinnati born. Scooter Jeanette. I'm sure, he's got a lot of friends and family watching back in Cincinnati. Spent his youth there, was born there, and then moved to Sarasota at age 12. But he always maintained ties to Cincinnati. He would come back when he was a high school player and play on Cincinnati area AAU teams, even though he was going to high school and. Sarasota, Florida. Yeah, hit his first career home run in Cincinnati. Sure did, right. And hit one in the last game we played in Cincinnati as well. Home runs have been a story for Jeanette this season. He's hit 14, which is a new career high for him. Two and two the count on Jeanette. Count goes full now. Australia's yeah, had good command all season long. 
Yeah, fastball, a two seam, four seam, slider and changeup. He'll throw an occasional curveball, but he's got a real good changeup. That's the pitch that struck out VR. 3 2 on the way, and it's a called strike three. Big zone tonight. Jeanette is rung up in a backwards cave for Straley. Just the opposite of last night, so be careful what you wish for, right? <laughs> Ryan Blackney was uh, very tight and Scooter Jeanette there is two strikes that were called that were off the plate number two and number six are strike calls both of them off the outside corner. Adrian Johnson calling the balls and strikes tonight. So I guess you have to decide which we would prefer. Usually depends on if you sway towards the pitcher or the hitter. Now these hitters they'll certainly be watching this and. Usually what happens is there's a there's some complaining but usually there are more aggressive early count swings when an umpire has a big zone. Ryan Braun back in the lineup 30 homers 90 RBIs on the season. And he whistles that one into left center a base hit over to cut it off is Duvall Ryan Braun is on with a single. And he extends the inning for Chris Carter. Well, certainly looking to finish strong, and Ryan now at a 307 batting average, and you know he wants to finish over 300. He's going to have to go into a horrific slump to be under 300 at this point. Hits that one hard into the gap. Two out single. Braun comes in ninth in the league in hitting. The man he's standing next to, Joey Votto, he is fourth in the National League. Here's Chris Carter tied for second in homers in the National League and Braun takes off Carter swings the throw to second not in time. Brandon Phillips saying look at my gloves. It's between the shoe and the base. Yeah, so Brian Price probably going to take a look at it. As they do with every close play. Brian Braun not messing around taking off on the first pitch. Let's see, um, is it one foot that hits the bag first? Right there. Now, does he leave the bag and does he get the other foot? Mm, this might be overturned here. The Reds are taking a look at this. The lead foot was off the bag. It hit the bag, off the bag, and then the trail foot ends up staying on the base. Now, is there separation at any point? Yeah, this one has a chance to be overturned. They are going to go to a challenge here. So the Reds feel confident there's enough. Video evidence here to change the call. And you can see that back foot of Braun never got to the base. Yeah, if the lead foot stays on the bag, it's an easy call. Crew chief on the right, Eric Cooper, with the home plate umpire, Adrian Johnson. And those two are checking the video board that they are showing here in Milwaukee. And Brian Price saying, yeah, we got a good case here. Well, if it is overturned, it's going to be the final out. Brian Braun has a chance at 20 steals this season. Always important to note the call of safe. On the field. Yeah, just have to determine in New York whether there's enough evidence to overturn it. Whether that back foot got any part of the bag after the front foot left the bag. Yeah, Phillips is. Calling him out. Stating his case, and Cooper calls him out, and the inning is over. So it is overturned, and it'll be a caught stealing to end the inning. We go to the second, two nothing, Cincinnati.
Heads over the Brewers as we head to the second. There's a look at Brandon Phillips and Ryan Braun. Phillips getting Braun on the stolen base. And earlier today, we talked to Craig Council about the Brewers with the win last night, securing a winning record here at home. They now have a 41 and 38 record. And Council said season to season, it's hard to figure out how a team will perform, the home and road splits. But he said certainly it's something that you want to create. And certainly there are guys on the team who feel that they have created that confidence here at home. They know they play well. The numbers indicate that. Guys like Kirk Newenheist, Chris Carter stick out. And he said individually, when you feel like you're playing well at home, that can have a carryover effect to the rest of the team. So as they have fan appreciation night, 2.3 million fans coming here to Miller Park. Council said certainly you always want to play well in front of your home crowd. All right, Sophia, thank you. Good thoughts from the skipper. Nice play at second base by Jeanette. That's how the second inning begins for Youngman as Scooter Jeanette takes a hit away from Ernan Iri Baran. And a good home record is good for attendance. Get people excited about coming to the ballpark. I mean, you might not play all that well at, on the road, but you know, if they know that you are going to play good baseball, win some games, people are going to come out. Good crowd tonight on a Saturday night, the last Saturday of the season at Miller Park. Fan Appreciation Weekend. And we'll wrap it all up tomorrow here at Miller Park. Day game with the Reds tomorrow, 1 10 first pitch. And then the Brewers are headed off on a road trip. That'll take them through Texas to play the Rangers, the American League West Division champs. Clinch last night did the Rangers. Be three games in Arlington and then three games against the Colorado Rockies. And that'll be a showdown between Nolan Arenado and Chris Carter for the home run race. Carter two behind Arenado, who's hit 40 this season. So plenty to watch plenty of entertainment and great races going on and it's six games left after the homestand concludes tomorrow. Tucker Barnhart at the plate with one away. Youngman hoping for a bounce back inning here and that one's on the ground to Jeanette nice and easy for him. Two outs. Hey, Brewers season seat holders enjoy the best seats at the lowest prices, plus have access to a number of exclusive rewards such as movie nights on the field, batting practice sessions, and more to place a deposit on 2017 season ticket plans. Go to Brewers.com slash ticket plans. Beautiful night in Milwaukee tonight. The roof is open for the first time in a couple of days. As Youngman hits the edge with a strike. Dan Straley, the pitcher at the plate. Does have a hit. He drove in a run with that hit. But his batting average is 0.021. He does have a batting average, but he has 47 at bats and one hit. So you're saying there's a chance. And there's a chance. <laughs> uh, speaking of hits, speaking of homers, by the way, we have baseball royalty joining us next inning, folks. Hank Aaron is coming on the air with us here for a fundraiser for his foundation. And we are thrilled to uh, be. Able to get a few minutes with Hammered Hank. His yeah. number is retired here in Milwaukee, and can't wait to see Hank again and have a chat with him. The true home run king. There's a swing and a miss. Youngman with a strikeout. Pena will secure it at first, and that will retire the side. So a good bounce back for Taylor Youngman. There he is. Hammered Hank's coming up. He'll be in the booth with us when we continue from Miller Park.
Reds are up two to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second inning and while there's baseball to be played here we are honored to have the man Hank Aaron is in the booth with us. Nice Hello you, sir. sir. Great to see you again. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. I know our fans are so looking forward to hearing all the things that uh, you have to say and uh, you know you're so beloved here in Milwaukee and everywhere but especially Milwaukee and I know Milwaukee has a, a special place in your heart as well. Well I do you know uh, it was either today uh, yesterday I'm, I'm one of the days is when I hit the home run in 57 to clinch the pennant. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came back just in time. <laughs> wow. Great memories. That's 57 team. Uh, so much to talk about with this team as we're watching a home run hitter at the plate in Chris Carter. Uh -huh. There was two home runs off the lead. But uh -huh. I love talking about uh, the fact that the plaque is out there for your last home run which was in a Brewers uniform and of course your first home run in Milwaukee as well. That's a fair ball by the way and Carter is out. But I wouldn't if I can tell us about your minor league days in Wisconsin because that's kind of where it started for you correct. You know, you know um, I guess many people might say that um, the reason that I'm so well liked in Milwaukee is because I was probably one of the first players to come up through the system. Mm -hmm. I played at Eau Claire class C ball. Uh, in the Northern League mm -hmm. for one year, then in Jacksonville, and that was a, my my minor league experience. That's a high fly ball by Santana. Duval is back, and Santana sends one out of here. <laughs> Only appropriate that with Hank Aaron <laughs> in the booth with us that we see a home run. And the Brewers cut into that deficit. Now two to one Reds as Domingo Santana pops his tenth. Was uh, was County Stadium a pretty good ballpark for you to hit home runs? It wasn't easy to hit him there. No, right? no, no. It wasn't easy, you know, because uh, it was built right on the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, because the center field was open up. Right, right. Uh, you either had to hit the ball down the line, but if you got it in center field, like of course, like this ball was hit just a minute ago. It'd go out of the ballpark, but if you hit the ball in the gap, it wouldn't go out of the ballpark. Don't you wish sometimes you could play in these stadiums these days? <laughs> <laughs> Have a lot. He no, hit a lot. Don't tell him I'm how many maybe, hit, right? maybe maybe 900, <laughs> right? Something like that. The, the great Hank Aaron is with us. Let's talk a little bit about your uh, chasing the dreams foundation. That's why you're in in Milwaukee in the first place, and it's been an event that the Brewers uh, have put on. You do events all over. Uh, the country but here in Milwaukee we get a chance to showcase your great foundation. Tell us about it and, and some of the great things that you're doing with your foundation. Well we are happy because we started this the year that I retired from baseball. We started right here in Milwaukee and I'm happy to say that the commissioner gave me the right to open up a what they call a Hank Aaron Chase the Dream Foundation. And now we have somewhere in the neighborhood of about a hundred and some odd kids that we send through different phases of the, the foundation, you know, like going to different schools. Mm -hmm. We even have them here in Milwaukee, all over. Uh, it's a great cause. It is a great cause. How was the event today? It was fine, but it's not over with yet. You know, tomorrow I'm going to be probably having lunch with the commissioner and trying to still raise some more money. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> was it nice to see your old buddy Bob Euchre next door here? <laughs> Yeah, with him. <laughs> Tell some stories, didn't he? It's always nice to see Bob. <laughs> now, I know that we the inning has just ended here, but can you give us a quick Bob Euchre story before we head out? Well, I can tell you one thing. I ended up my career with 755 home runs. Mm -hmm. And Bob Euchre always said, taking one away from me in shot in St. Louis. When I was hitting against Kurt Simmons, he, he claimed that I stepped out of the batter's box and hit a home run off Craig Simmons. And the umpire taking Chris, oh, okay. Chris Pelacudos. So call me out for, <laughs> well, I always say call me out for travel. So you can uh, <laughs> rat it on you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Not yes. good, not good. Yeah. If, you, if you had to room with Bob Euchre, uh -huh. how many home runs would you have hit? Maybe a couple none, hundred? None, <laughs> <laughs> none. The great Hank Aaron has oh, been with nice. us. It's always great to see you, Hank. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. We will uh, direct people to thank the you. foundation, sir. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you.
Well, we are back here at Miller Park. Sorry for the delay. We were we were taking pictures with Hank Aaron, so no play-by-play -play necessary. They did a nice uh, moment here between innings with uh, Hank. He stood up, and the crowd acknowledged him. What a great, what a great man. Always love being next to Hank Aaron. Yeah, this was the moment between innings. You don't just rush Hank Aaron out, you know no. what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it, it just ha he has that special presence about him. You know, he comes into the booth, and all of a sudden, you, know, you have a little, you're a little bit nervous. Yeah, you know, no sitting question. next to Hank. I mean, it's uh, you're not often that you get to do that with with anybody, particularly a sports personality, a sports guy. But he's so much more than that. It's uh, just a treat to be around him. Well, we only had uh, a half inning with Hank. The Brewers could have uh, helped us out a little bit with maybe a. Take a few pitches next time, Rock. I did get a home run. <laughs> did get a home run with Hank Aaron with us. But we do want to uh, remind you we we asked Hank about his foundation, the Chasing the Dream Foundation. Runner takes off, throw to second, right on the bag. Pina cuts down Peraza. And so the first out at second base on a caught stealing. Well, he's got a good arm and he has a good transfer right there and the ball sails on him a little bit but still in plenty of time to get the out RCA able to make the tag easily out at second base. Good throw by the Brewer catcher. Scott Shebler at the plate. Oh, so we do want to encourage you to. Go online, check out the uh, the website. Just do a search for Chasing the Dream Foundation, Hank Aaron's Foundation. That'll work too, and that'll direct you there. And uh, he does great work, as he mentioned, raising a lot of money and supporting a lot of different programs. And uh, we stand behind him 100% and always want to promote whatever is important to Hank because he's important to us. Yeah, he moves around the country quite a bit, uh, promoting his charity and a lot of other different things. And Still looking good. Hank Aaron. The true home run king. Earlier today Hank was. Here in Milwaukee and uh, he was. Uh, talking to a number of the folks that. Participated in the event telling some stories and. He does it every year here in Milwaukee and as he said he. Has a special place in his heart for this city and obviously Atlanta which is uh, where he lives and. Always good to see him. Shebler takes a ball inside. We've got more guests coming up in the booth, by the way. We're going to visit with the Brewers minor league pitcher and player of the year. They are going to be joining us shortly. There's a called strike three, and Taylor Youngman is settled in now. A strikeout, his second. Has that cut fastball, and that's where he wants it down in the zone. It's right down the heart of the plate, but down around the knees, Shepler takes it. That's what he needs to do. He needs to keep the baseball down. First inning, maybe the nerves, not sure what it was, but everything up and gave up the two runs. Votto swings and fouls one away. One of the other things that connects us with Hank Aaron is the Boys and Girls Clubs. Of America and tomorrow is the the give back game and one of the four charities you can support by attending that game is the Boys and Girls Clubs of America and uh, the Chasing the Dream Foundation closely tied in with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America and so one thing to keep in mind the foundation was started in 1994 thanking his wife Billy. Tickets still available for tomorrow's game. Yeah, we need to fill the place up. They, it's going to be a big crowd, but there are still tickets for sale. Ten dollars. Do it right now. Go online, and uh, you can indicate which charity you'd like your ten dollars to go to. And then come see us tomorrow for the last home game 
Yep, come to the ball game, support Hank Aaron and the Boys and Girls Club if you want. Good way to do it. There's the website right there, Brewers.com slash give back. Win win for everybody. 2 2 to Votto and a swing and a foul out of play. Good catch. Got a foul ball. Sporting the colors. Two two the count. And he misses low and away ball three. Taylor Youngman giving up the two run homer to Votto in the first. Walked the next hitter and has settled down since only the bunt single by Peraza. Youngman has faced the minimum. Since that walk in the first inning to Duval. Little half swing foul. Brewers have a shift on for Votto. Three infielders on the right side. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. We saw in his last at bat yesterday, they played him straight up. That's ball four. Votto draws the walk. And a man on with two outs. Hey, don't miss the final Kids Eat Free Sunday of 2016. That's tomorrow afternoon. All kids 14 and under at Miller Park for the Brewers' last home game of the season. We'll get a free lunch courtesy. Uh, pick and say Blue Bunny and Hines. Two gone here is Duvall. On the first pitch, a fly ball in the right center. Santana is there, and that will retire the side. So Youngman with two scoreless innings. It's two to one. Brewers are coming up. In Milwaukee, two to one now. The Reds have the lead over the Brewers. A Domingo Santana homer has cut into that deficit. Our Carsu.com trivia tonight: What team turned two triple plays in a single game? You Good know one. what? I almost gave away that uh, that answer. Did you? We were talking about that, and I, I remember it happening. And the same guy started the uh, both triple plays. 
Very good. I can't wait for the reveal. Have the answer for you shortly. Michael Reed leads off. Ground ball to third. Gloved over there by Suarez. And Reed is retired. Australia coming off a nine pitch inning with Hank Aaron in the booth. Thanks a lot, Dan. <laughs> and uh, the Brewers did get a run with that Santana homer. You know, that's when you want, like, you know, a, a six run inning, you know. Right. Eight, nine hits, a couple of walks. 30 minute half inning. There's right. so much to talk with Hank about. He was, he was being nice about you. I mean, I've heard stories about you and uh, <laughs> Hank. Mr. Aaron to us. Yeah, I thought he had uh, roomed with, uh, was uh, roommates with Bob Euchre at some point, and he said, oh, no, no way. I told him, no, there's no way. I'm going to. I'm not doing I that. I can't do that. I wouldn't have played as long as I did. Yeah, he said it wouldn't have lasted very long. <laughs> <laughs> he and Bob Euchre are great friends. And yeah, all joking around. Watching those two together, you just, you forget that you're interacting with legends when they're together. They're all, they're like, 25 year old players again Their teammates ground ball Youngman the short and the throw to first is in time nice play yeah, they act like uh, you know teammates I mean when I get together with you know old, old teammates you know mm -hmm. get together you really don't have any warming up in the bullpen thing you just jump right back into it whether it was five years 10 years 15 years that you haven't seen each other it's just you just pick up right where you left off and those are true friendships and Hank Aaron and Bob Euchre certainly have that. Well, we're so proud to have Hank as part of this community. Certainly, baseball is proud to have Hank as a part of the baseball, the Major League Baseball community. But here in Milwaukee, especially with all the history here and the Milwaukee Braves, and Hank referenced that home run in '57, hit the anniversary of that dramatic moment, that season for Milwaukee baseball. There's an old Braves hat, a Milwaukee Braves hat. A special place in the hearts of many here yeah. who are around to see that. Rich baseball history here in Milwaukee with you know Borchard Field and, and minor league baseball. Yeah. BR takes a ball high. You talks about that all the time. You know the fun times that Everybody had here in Milwaukee in the early days with Orchard Field and the early days of County Stadium. There is a strike call by Adrian Johnson. I tell you, Straley has been able to have an open door out there. Now Taylor Youngman didn't get this call with Votto at the plate, but Straley pitch number five. Well, borderline, you can see it, maybe touching the line. I what a difference a day makes. Yeah. Squeeze the, the both pitchers last night. That'll be up there swinging. That one's a ball. And VR is aboard. So now VR with a chance to take over the league lead in stolen bases by himself. MLB postseason's coming your way. The National League Division Series starts October 7th on FS1. American League over on TBS this season and the NL. With Fox, FS1, and our friends from MLB Network. But it all kicks off October 7th. Can't wait. Great races going on right now, too. The wild card races are as thick as it could be. So many teams, very similar records. Who knows how it's going to go this week? National League wild card, you have the Mets. Plus one right now in the top spot. The Giants and the Cardinals are in a tie. Pirates are three and a half back. American League wild card. There are three teams in it now because the Blue Jays, who occupy the top spot, they're two games clear. And then you got Baltimore and Detroit with identical records. And then the Mariners are a game and a half back. The Astros are two back. So legitimate. Five teams for two spots in the running there in the American League wildcard. Could be multiple playing games. 
Might just see it. Put a and monkey wrench into the schedule. Then you start going to the ABC scenario, which is complicated and not worth bringing up until we actually get into that scenario. It has to do with season head to head matchups. Congratulations to the Texas Rangers. Second team to clinch, first American League team. A lot of former Brewers on that ball club. John Lucroy, Carlos Gomez celebrating. Prince Fyodor, I saw, was in the melee. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. Jeremy Jeffers is back. Not active yet, but back with the ball club. Oh, and two to Jeanette with VR at first. The next stolen base for VR will put him at the top of the National League lead by himself. Currently tied with Billy Hamilton. 58 apiece. And Jeanette takes a ball. Australia doing a good job keeping him off balance over at first base. Went quick pitched him that time. Didn't give him a shot. Yeah, Hamilton probably out for this season. Not, not sure, but and Starling Marte's got a bad back. He's got no shot, but looks like VR is going to get it. Well, Jeanette rolls over one foul. At that time of year, everybody banged up. A lot of times that's what it comes down to right your playoff contending teams are the teams that for the most part stay the healthiest throughout the year mm -hmm. especially the, with the pitching staff the year the Reds made it in one year Cincinnati went to the postseason I believe that was the 2012 season they used only five starters all season never went to a six starter the entire year. There goes VR pitches outside throw to second is high and safe is the call. Jonathan VR with stolen base number 59. And he worked for that one. He just could not get a good jump off of Straley. Straley did a good job keeping him close. And finally not the greatest jump but a nice lead. Throw a little bit high. That's what got him the stolen base. High throw. He just couldn't figure Straley's move out. And he's able to steal it anyway. Umpire was taking a second look out there, Eric Cooper, to see if he was going to be able to keep his hand on the bag, which he did. 59 bags for VR, and now the league leader. And a stolen base crown. Looks like will be his this season. Hamilton's on the disabled list, by the way, with that oblique injury, so he's not coming back. Most stolen bases in a season in franchise history, 73. VR is third on the list. And the Brewers, by far and away, the most stolen bases by a team. It's going to be part of the identity moving forward. The Brewers are going to be a team that is going to run, have speed. Have a lot of stolen bases. Two and two to Jeanette. Been a long battle here with Scooter. Then he fights another one off foul. He's seen eight pitches this at bat. A base hit will tie it. We are ready to run at second. He'll be off at the crack of the bat. And it's up the middle, hits the mound, and right to Peraza. The inning is over. Straley puts up a zero, but Jonathan VR with a stolen base to the top of the National League leaderboard he goes.
Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Hupe and Abraham 1-800-800-5678 Hupe and Abraham tell them you mean business back at Miller Park Domingo Santana with a home run to put the Brewers on the board that came in the second inning and we're here taking selfies with our new best friend Isan yeah. Diaz I mean <laughs> by the way you're following Hank Aaron here so yeah. he just sat in that chair that's just a few minutes ago I don't want to make you nervous or anything no no no. it's an honor to be in this chair <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's good to have you son what a year uh, Isan had he is the Brewers minor league player of the year first year in the Brewers organization came to Milwaukee in a trade and you should probably start from there there is the son before the game with Brandon Woodruff who is the minor league pitcher of the year and so let's uh, kind of begin from your beginnings with Milwaukee when did you find out about the trade and what was that like for you to hear that you've been traded to the Brewers um, I found out uh, sometime in February I was in a exactly watching a movie with the family <laughs> and uh, get this uh, weird phone call and uh, you know it's uh, the surprise of hey you know you've been uh, traded to Milwaukee and uh, I was like wow man. I, I, at the first I couldn't believe it it was yeah. just something that I had to soak in first but uh, once I got all the details and told the family and stuff it was it was something you know different I would say I didn't expect it you know to be so early in my career but uh, very blessed to be here with this uh, with this organization. Uh, yeah before we get into uh, your season uh, down on the field what were your thoughts standing on the field you go in the clubhouse I'm sure you did your thoughts about Miller Park and the experience today it's a it's a great ballpark man. we uh, we actually uh, the greatest thing about today was we were able to go in and uh, see the Buck League experience down and uh, mm -hmm. and that video was uh, was amazing and it inspired uh, you know me myself and uh, actually you know Brandon as well uh, we're just uh, very amazed about you know the the, the history of this ballpark mm -hmm. and everything that's been going on here in Milwaukee and it's uh, it was an honor to be on that field and and it was very special. Something, uh, something I'll remember forever. Did you, uh, did you feel like you wanted to grab a bat and take some cuts today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, some of the guys actually asked me if I wanted to go out there, man. It was, uh, that would have been pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, your your season this this season, you hit a lot of home runs. Uh, an infielder by trade, middle infielder who hits a lot of home runs, and you start to start to project forward. But your name has come up quite often on our broadcast. We feel like we know you because we're doing our minor league reports. We actually did a a great feature down there. Thank you for the access for that. You guys were living with host families and yes. Well what strikes me about you and looking at that video and then visiting with you now is the poise that you have. I mean you're a 20 year old kid basically 20 year old guy from single A and you carry yourself very well. So where does that come from. Where does that poise start from in your life. Um, I, I think it just uh, well my, my parents my father is uh, you know he 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 thrives on on things like this and um, you know, he just he, he knows how to how to be in the, in the moment, you know, and just enjoying the moment. It, it, it's it's you know, it's a once in a lifetime thing. And, uh, you know, we've actually gone over it. You know, we've gone over this plenty of times nice. and, and trying to just, uh, you know, hey, enjoy it. You know, this is something that, that, you know, it comes, you know, for certain people only. And, and, and just to be here now and, and experiencing this and. And knowing what it could be in the future, nice. you know, on an everyday basis. I mean, who wouldn't want to come to work every day and, and, <laughs> and be here and playing in front of all these beautiful people? Give us some names now. Your father, father uh, Raúl Diaz. Raúl Diaz. Yeah, yeah. my uh, my mother Delsa Santana, who's back at home. My brother, uh, who's Raúl Jr., and uh, my sister. Her name is Lala. So. Uh, sounds like a great family. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're they're great people. I love them to death, and uh, can't wait to see them. What's the next step for you? What's the off season going to be like? What are Maybe a few things that you'd like to tighten up with your game. What are your shortcomings? What are your strengths? You know, how do you see this offseason going? Um, well, I, I, I'm trying to get back up to par with uh, obviously trying to get on the stealing bases out now. You know, obviously you got Villar who's up there with uh, 59. So uh, I see this this year kind of, you know, could have been a little bit better on the bases. And, um, you know, so that's kind of a part of my game that I'm uh, going to try to improve more and and obviously with the stick and the glove every year is just trying to get better and, and, and learn from other players. Now you're a shortstop and you had you led the Midwest League in home runs or I should say extra base hits and total bases. Uh, you walk a lot. Is that part of been been a part of your game all along the you know the power game at the plate. Um, not, not really uh, uh, the power game I think uh, just came um, 
you know, just throughout the, the mental part of, of, of going through ABs and learning, you know, different, you know, counts and what pitchers try to do to you, uh, it, it's easier to, to go, you know, in and at bat and have an approach, and, and that actually helps a lot, you know. So uh, that, that side of the game kind of helped me a lot, and uh, I think that's where kind of all the – the power mentally has kind of mm -hmm. kind of helped me out. So. Did, yeah. you get, did you get a chance to talk to some of the guys? There was one guy down there that maybe uh, kind of took you aside and uh, told you a few things about uh, you know your experiences in the minor leagues. Yeah, um, uh, well, well, during the season we had a, a couple guys come down, uh, obviously on rehab assignments. Uh, Domingo Santana came down, uh, Middlebrooks came down. Uh, we had Matt Garza down there for a while. So obviously, you know, asked questions and, and those guys gave uh, some good feedback and. And we kind of soaked in a lot as a group and as a team. And I think from there, we kind of that's where you kind of saw a lot of the, uh, you know, the playoff run and, and everyone trying to gel in as a team. Mm -hmm. So they pick up the spread down there by chance. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> but Domingo was saying, hey, if we didn't win, we were going to get any spread. So <laughs> yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of the responsibility of a guy coming down. He's got to buy guys everything, right? right they yeah. did that, right? Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah. He's San Diaz is our guest. The Brewers minor league player of the year it was in. Single A in Appleton this year, the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. And we saw some uh, video footage of Isan, the shortstop. Now, if I'm not mistaken, one of those last images there, you just threw one off the scoreboard. <laughs> you went off the scoreboard <laughs> yeah. home run. Yeah, is that a regular thing for you? That's pretty good pop opposite field. Yeah, um, well, that's I, I kind of try to focus more on that side of the field and try to work over there. And that one, man, that just kind of took off you know it was nice. like so it was a that was a that one felt good wind was blowing in too I heard you got it off the end of the bat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what you got to say uh, missed that one missed that almost one. almost <laughs> got it on the sweet spot the yep. <laughs> Hernani Ribar not the plate for the Reds Youngman steps off a 3 2 count well this uh, we hear a lot about Matt Erickson the manager of the Timber Rattlers we we've, we've interacted with him on occasion throughout the years seems like a real managerial prospect. The runner goes, a swing and a miss. The throw is late. Youngman will pick up a strikeout, but that'll be a stolen base for Suarez. And just tell us a little bit about your manager, maybe the coaching staff there, and tell the fans uh, what they are like and what it's like playing baseball in Wisconsin. It's great. I mean, Maddie, Maddie's a he's a great guy. He's just overall, he's just uh, you know very open with the team. I mean, he's a uh, you know. Always uh, very encouraging and always just trying to have fun. Uh, our heading coach, Al LaBeouf, and Chucky Caulfield, those guys, are they're, they're just great. You know, they, they teach you the right way and, and the things to do, you know, to better yourself as a player and as a person. And this year has been great, you know, throughout the whole season going, uh, going up against, you know, tough pitchers out there and then learning from them. And uh, it's, been, it's been great having, uh, having Maddie and, uh, and Chucky and, and Buffy around. And, uh, you know, hopefully they... Uh, Hopefully I can see him soon. Do you guys keep get a sense for what's going on here in Milwaukee with the big league club? I mean, you're following the papers. I mean, off days, you ever get down here to the ballpark? Yeah, I came a couple times with uh, some of the teammates uh, when we had the chance uh, to come down and catch a couple games. Uh, that was uh, my I, this year was my first time ever coming to Miller Park, and uh, when I first stepped in the park and just admiring the field, it was it was unbelievable. It is nice. Yeah, that big league atmosphere, and hopefully you'll be here one day and. The fact that you've already been involved in a trade with so many major leaguers, I know that has to mean something to you that the Brewers really held out for you. You were one of the key pieces, you know. I don't know if they've shared that with you, but they've shared it with us. And as you emerge through the organization and end up as the player of the year, um, the story goes that the Gene Segura deal, Tyler Wagner to the Diamondbacks, coming back from Arizona was uh, Aaron Hill. And this was one of those trades that Isan Diaz was the name that they were going to stick with until yeah. they got it done. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel very good about myself as a person and as a player. Obviously, uh, you know, I know, you know, that, you know, they know obviously what I'm capable of, of doing on the field. And uh, and as a person, uh, you know, knowing uh, Mike Sabalik, who, you know, the guy who scouted me and Ray uh, Montgomery, those guys that, you know, were uh, over there as well. And, um, you know, so it, it means a lot to me mm. to, to just come here and then, and now it's just trying to put all the pieces together and and uh, make sure that uh, you know everything is done the right way and uh, and try to play here in uh, in Miller Park one day. A lot of competition, middle infielders. I mean, rich this organization, very rich with middle infielders. So uh, you know, good luck uh, going forward for sure. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so much. Son.
Appreciate you being here, man. Thank Great you year. So much. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you so nice much. Nice to finally nice put job. the face with the name. Hassan Diaz, the Brewers minor league player of the year, had a great year down in the Midwest League. Good job. Thank you. Thank you so much. have a two to one lead over the Brewers time now for our T-Mobile greater coverage of baseball some action in the big leagues earlier today for the St. Louis Cardinals it was a big 10 to 4 win against the Cubs holding off the Cubs as they look to get 100 wins and more importantly for the Cardinals they tie up the National League wild card race and Clayton Kershaw will take the mound tonight as the Dodgers look to clinch the National League West their magic number is at two and as you can see Clayton Kershaw very dominant in his home stadium 70 wins nine shutouts and one no hitter and as we told you before the Texas Rangers clinched their second straight year winning the division a number of former Brewers involved there Jonathan Lucroy Prince Fielder was a part of the celebrations Jeremy Jeffress recently returning to the team and Carlos Gomez as well so congrats to all of them involved uh, with the Texas Rangers. All right Sophia thanks congratulations indeed Clayton Kershaw by the way spoke at the Vin Scully tribute last night he represented the Dodger players he did a great job that's a pitcher who carries a heavy burden as an ace and a Cy Young Award winner and an MVP and stepped up in a moment like that and was part of the celebration last night in Los Angeles and it went long and I'm so happy it went long mm -hmm. because Vin Scully deserves that treatment there was just a beautiful moment with Kevin Costner the actor. Um, he pretty much summed it up for all of the fans of Vin Scully. Braun a fly ball. It's going to bounce foul. Let's take a listen to some of what we saw last night from the Vin Scully tribute. That's not fair. You made me cry once tonight. Hi everybody and a very pleasant good evening to you. For those of you who wonder about what I will do, put it this way. I'm looking for a much smaller house and a much larger medicine cabinet. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Just great. Ryan Braun in the right field. That's going to stay in. And there's out number one. I watched the tribute last night. It was it was just fantastic. Sandy Koufax stood up there and it was right near the mound at Dodger Stadium and he said I've been on this mound many times I've never been as nervous as I am right now that's Sandy Koufax right yeah talking about Vin Scully Clayton Kershaw the mayor of Los Angeles and of course uh, Kevin Costner closed it out and then Vin spoke and he was just so eloquent as always no script no teleprompter he just he spoke from the heart and he did bring up the fact everybody's asking him what to do what's he's going to what's he going to do next and he goes well at 89 years old 
I'm just going to try to live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody knows Vince Scully and know the voice. I mean, you know him from television and radio and doing all the sports that he's done and just brings everything to you as, you know, a friend would, right? Right. Ball's dropped it short, recovered, and but Carter is out. Few people, you and I included in that, know Vince Scully on a personal level and as wonderful and as majestic a career he's had in the in broadcasting he is one of the most terrific down to earth people I've ever met in my life and if anybody had the right to have an attitude it would be Vince Scully right. he never did he never does we come to Dodger Stadium once a year and he welcomes us into the booth like we're family it's amazing that guy you know how welcoming he is and he, he sits down and has chats with you and you know, just asking him who had the best throwing arm. You know, Carl <laughs> Farrello had a great. I mean, just to hear the names yeah. that he pops out there. You know, just an incredible human being. He's going to be missed. We've been asked. A lot of broadcasters have been asked, especially play-by-play -play broadcasters, asked to do various tributes and say certain things. And you know, there's so many things that that we want to say and we were able to say. And we still thank Vince Scully for coming on the air with us. In Los Angeles, still one of the highlights of my career to be able to sit down and interview him. Uh, but my my memory, my first memory of Vince Scully was my first day in the big leagues at Miller Park. I actually ran into him in the men's room here in the press box at Miller Park. <laughs> he was still traveling with the Dodgers back then, and I remember he said, "Well, I don't think I'll shake your hand now." <laughs> but he did say, uh, "This is the." essence of Vince Scully said you must be the new man here with the Brewers. He knew there had been a, a broadcaster hired and once I introduced myself he he said those words and and then he said uh, well one thing I can tell you is it's a great job. It pays well and there's no heavy lifting. <laughs> so he always had that ability to kind of bring it back to. Yeah. Uh, a smile or a comedic place or just he's just a genuine human being just so humble doesn't like to talk about himself as a half swing and Santana strikes out to end the inning one two three inning for Straley two to one ball game we head to the fifth at Miller Park. Coming up in a 2 1 Cincinnati lead. And our carsuit.com trivia tonight. What team turned two triple plays in a single game? Brewers have turned two this year. The Minnesota Twins of 1990 turned two. Gary Gaetti started both of them, first and second, ground ball to third base, stepped on the bag and around the horn two different times, and I believe it was back to back innings. You know you're going good when you're getting out of those kind of jams with a triple play. They are rare. There have been eight in Brewers franchise history. Two of them this season. New pitcher Rock Youngman hit a pitch count and he is out. 
giving up two runs in four innings. And it'll be Tyler Cravey to pick up a couple of innings, you would think. Well, Youngman did a nice job settling down. He really did. I mean, he was down three to nothing at, or two to nothing after the first three hitters. One pitch and one out for Cravey as Jose Peraza flies out. Pitched on Tuesday to Cravey against the Pirates. A scoreless inning, a couple of strikeouts. He's been unscored upon in all 10 appearances since being called up. Done a nice job. He'll face Scott Shebler back in the number two spot in the batting order again tonight. It does set up back to back lefties for the Reds, but certainly Joey Votto is not your typical left hander, and the Reds feel very highly about Shebler facing lefties if you run into a bullpen situation. The Brewers only have one lefty in their pen, that is Brent Suter. But the Reds are high on Shebler, figure he could be an everyday player. Perhaps. They're going to have to come up with somebody to take over Jay Bruce. Not uh, easy shoes to fill. Bruce has not played well for the Mets. They were hoping that would be Cespedes round two, give the Mets a jolt. New York is. Winning games, you're playing well. I mean, they had a little bit of a slide, but they've gotten it back together again, and they're in the wild card picture. That's a plus one. They have the top spot. They would host the wild card game if it ended today, which it doesn't. Two two pitch, rolls it foul. Cravey thought he had a strikeout. Yep, just at the bottom of the strike zone, and number seven could have been a strike. A little quick release and a swing and a miss. So Cravey changes it up a little bit. Not just his motion, but the pitch itself gets the strikeout. Yep, got the split change down in the zone and. After getting a break on a pitch before, Shebler swings at a pitch out of the strike zone. That's a good arm action. Pulls a string on him, and he's way out in front. Interesting how he almost did a, like a little slide step. There's the big turn. So remember that one. That big leg kick and the big turn. He's just disrupting the hitter's timing any way he can. Taking a page out of uh, Johnny Cueto's playbook. Yep, that's right. It's a good idea. The art of pitching is making a comeback. Not just the art of throwing. Disrupting the timing, that's what it's all about. So if you don't have really great stuff, which Cravey doesn't, I mean, they're not the overpowering fastball or that electric slider. You try to do different things to just throw the hitter off. And the delivery is a big part of that. 0 2 pitch. Little roller right to Cravey, and Votto is out. Good inning. Tyler Cravey retires the side in order. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It is 2 to 1, Cincinnati.
Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by Bank of America, life's better when we are connected. Lights are up on a Saturday night, Miller Park, Milwaukee. Dan Straley is on the mound. He's given up one run. Home run to Santana. Pena at the plate, pops this one a mile high. And Votto calls and catches for out number one on the first pitch of the fifth inning. This guy's been tough on the Brewers this year. And without a doubt, I mean, Straley, outstanding work. 2 0 coming in, three starts. He's allowed only four runs in his first three starts. He's given up only one tonight. Not a hard thrower, just uh, pretty smart, mixes it up and works the edges. Here's Orlando Arcia. Well, Straley has been the Reds' best pitcher this year. And you're talking about a guy that has been in three years traded three times and placed on waivers. Any team could have had him. San Diego Padres put him on waivers. The Reds picked him up. He was traded from the Astros to the Padres in the first place. But he's a guy that consumes the analytics concerning his pitching spin rates and all the various things that goes into successful pitching quadrants to pitch and uh, studies the hitters a guy that is probably more suited to have success in the big leagues than the minor leagues because of all the information that is available he's got great recall and he's having a career year and it's the kind of year that's going to put him on the map for a while in the major leagues he's not going to have to fight for a job next season Arcia with a base hit. First hit for the Brewers since the home run by Santana in the second inning. Yeah, my only third hit all night. Kind of reminds you a little bit of the way Di Sclafani was going at it last night. The Brewers weren't able to muster a whole lot. A second inning home run against Di Sclafani. Then the Brewers broke it open in the seventh. So maybe we'll see the same tonight. Well, the Brewers down early in this one with Votto's two run homer in the first. Have the tying run on with Michael Reed at the plate. Little flare in the right field, falling fast, and it's down, a base hit. So Michael Reed with a single to right, and the bottom of the order with back to back hits. And that's going to chase Tyler Cravey. He was on deck. And Michael Reed gets sawed off just a bit down on the handle and he's able to dump it out into right field. You see Eric Barn trying to deke the runner not going to happen. So first and second one out and Brewers are going to go to the bench. Osmil Pinto will come in to hit for the Brewers. That is his career at a couple of years with the Twins. But his first appearance in the big leagues last night for the first time since 2014 spent the year in Colorado Springs catching and playing first base big spot for him here two on one out fouls it back Pinto was called up Tuesday. Hit 308 in AAA this season, had 11 homers and 51 RBIs. Hosmil Pinto. Got to be a thrill for him to be back in the big leagues. He had just assumed his season was over. And that he was not going to get that call up to the majors. Can't have uh, enough catchers that can swing the bat a little bit. Brewers have a couple of them. Pena, and Maldonado can run into one once in a while, a home run. This guy could swing the bat a little bit, the minor league numbers. 
Well, I'm going to the days where you can hide your catcher and not have him hit. That's not the way it is anymore. It used to be that way. Everybody's got to hit these days. Arcia was dancing off second base. Straley checks on him. Straley's got the one he wants. One and two the count. And he fights it off, does Pinto. A native of Venezuela, Pinto plays in winter ball every year. I'm sure, he'll be headed back to winter ball again this season. Knows he might have a chance to make a big league club here in Milwaukee next year. Brewers called up Pinto primarily because they were getting thin on the bench. Needed some some firepower. They had not planned on calling a Pinto to the major leagues. But injuries to Keon Broxton and Kirk Neuenheis affected that. And then Ryan Braun and Manny Pena went on parental leave. Paternity leave. So that left the Brewers with a, a big hole for hitters as Pinto strikes out. Hey, keep up with the Brewers wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the official app of the Brewers featuring live broadcasts, scoring updates, breaking news, and more. Download at bat today, free for your smartphone or tablet. Two men are out. Top of the order here is VR now. Brewers have two on the tying run at second base in the speedy Arcia. Michael Reed carries the go ahead run. We are with a stolen base in the third after a walk. At the top of the National League and steals now by himself. Just surpassed Billy Hamilton of the Reds. There's a strike one and one on VR. Oregon native Dan Straley. Drafted by the A's. And it's been a wild ride since his days coming up with the A's. A's to the Cubs to the Astros all of those were trades. One team to the next. And then to the Padres in a trade. And we saw him in Chicago briefly, made seven appearances with the Cubs in 2014. Last year, he was teammates with VR in Houston. On the ground, Phillips backhands it, flips it over to second for the out. And that will end the inning. A promising inning, but nothing showing for the Brewers. Still two to one Reds. We go to the sixth.
two to one lead for the Reds. And earlier this afternoon, what's starting to become an annual tradition, Milwaukee Brewers players, coaches, members of the organization going on rides to the golf carts, surprising tailgaters here just outside Miller Park with gifts, handshakes. You know, there were probably a few selfies or photos taken along the route as well, but it's always a highlight for these players to get out there into the parking lots, interact with fans, and more importantly, thank them for their support all season long. More than 2.3 million fans will have come here to Miller Park this season. So uh, thank you to all the fans as we celebrate Fan Appreciation Weekend uh, here with the final home game coming up tomorrow. Yeah, and we all owe a great thank you to our fans watching in every night on Fox Sports Wisconsin as well, watching Brewers TV. We wouldn't be here without you, and yep. we know that. We thank you for all the great comments, even all the bad comments. And you know what? We <laughs> just hope that uh, everybody enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed doing it. A lot of fun being here at the ballpark and doing Brewers baseball. It's been an uh, interesting year. It's been an exciting year, as far as I'm concerned. And Jacob Barnes thinks pretty exciting too, being in the big leagues. He's thrown well. Facing Adam Duvall to start the inning, and he put it right by him. Barnes, the second reliever, third pitcher. Tyler Cravey worked a scoreless fifth. Where was going to have a bit of a bullpen game? Today, because Youngman went just four innings. Remember, Taylor's coming back. He had been shut down for a while, so it isn't quite stretched out enough to ask him to go too long in this game. Ends up going four. Right now, he's on the hook for the loss. As Duvall hammers one to left field, Braun will turn and watch this one off the wall. Duvall's on his way to second, got a play here, and Scooter can't come up with a short hop. Would have been close, but a tough hop to handle. Duvall is in with a double. Well, he plays that off the wall so well. I mean, very familiar, as you would expect, out here in left field at Miller Park. He kind of knows those caroms as well as anybody. That was a, one of those cut fastballs that stayed up down the middle of the plate. But watch Braun. The way he's able to play it off the wall to make it close at second base. Realize not going to get there. One hops and a nice throw into second base. That's the way you do it. So Brandon Phillips will bat now with a runner at second. Phillips lined out in the first, had a fly out in the fourth. Barnes trying to keep the Reds off the scoreboard here. Brewers down one, two to one. Brewers would like to win the season series on Cincinnati, which they have a chance to do. That one skips in. Pena keeps it close enough. Runner cannot advance. Right now, the Reds have the season series advantage 9 8. Brewers would have to sweep this series, win the next two games, and they'd finish at 10 and 9. Craig Council puts great emphasis on facing division opponents, even with two teams that are not. In the postseason picture, and are at the bottom of the division standings. Snap throw to second. Duval is back. Great council plays high emphasis on anything that has to do with winning, no matter who it is, right? Fundamentals, play the game the right way, and wins will take care of themselves. He doesn't focus on the wins, he focuses on the little things that you have to do to win games. Two and one. Phillips shows bunt, bunts it foul. Not exactly sure what Phillips is doing, bunting in this situation up by a run. Phillips giving himself up. Just to get a guy over to third base, I guess. 
He figures he's not able to get a ground ball to the right side so bunt. I would imagine that's not what Brian Price has in mind for him at the plate. There's the red skipper. And a wave and a miss. So Brandon Phillips strikes out. That wicked breaking ball by Jacob Barr. He calls it a cutter and it is nasty. Call it anything you want. That's a slider and it's a <laughs> yeah. good one. He spins it, right? <laughs> spins that thing and throws it hard. That came in at 89 miles an hour. Yeah, typically cut fastballs don't have that kind of depth to it. I mean they kind of go across, you know, like the one Carlos Torres throws. Taylor Youngman has one, but that's a slider. And there is a strike. Hey, Eugenio Suarez with one away. Walked his last time up, had a stolen base. Runner goes. Pena's throw to third, no chance. Pitch was called a strike. Duvall swipes third base. Barnes paying very little attention to him. Yeah, he had a walking lead. Never slowed him down. Check it out. I mean, there he goes. No chance to get him if you're Manny Pena. One two pitch and it's in the air foul. That'll head in the seats. We're going to have Brandon Woodruff come on with us the minor league pitcher of the year. Next inning. Make sure you. Stay tuned for that. What a story he is. 14 game winner in single A this year Brandon Woodruff Brown ball chopper to VR in and out of his glove and everybody is safe here Duvall scores and the Reds have a 3 1 lead that stolen base proves big for Cincinnati big chopper that hit the dirt in front of home plate and took a huge bounce. Yeah, might have been able to get the out at first base, but it's certainly, you know, not at home plate. He yeah, had Duvall got a good jump off the bag, and all hands are safe. That'll be a base hit. Or at yeah. least you think it will. It's a hit and an RBI, and now a base hit by Erie Barron into left center. And the third hit of the inning against Jacob Barnes. Fastball was uh, up, but on the corner, and Nero Barron just kind of served it out to left field. And then let's check out tonight's time of the game winner. It's Scooter's Tap in Milwaukee. If they call the Brewers by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, they get 40 tickets to an April or May 2017 Brewers home game. They saw for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. Scooter's Tap. <laughs> Not Scooter Jeanette. I know just the guy to endorse that tavern. At least I don't think it's his place. There's a few scooters around. Ryan Jeanette goes by Scooter. Brewers are looking to turn a double play here to get out of this inning. A run is in, three hits in the inning. 
First and second for Tucker Barnhart. And that one's in there for a strike. Oh, to the count. Barnes coming right after him. I think VR's coming in just to make sure Barnes keeps an eye on the runner at second. Don't get into that rhythmic release to the plate. That has cost him a run here because the stolen base by Duvall set him up to score on that infield hit. No balls, two strikes. On the ground, chance to turn it. Jeanette Arcia fires one to first in time. A double play to end the inning. Just what Jacob Barnes was looking for. Four, six, three it goes. And the Reds get one. Brewers down two as we go to the home sixth. Oh, the famous racing sausages. Rock, we have a plant tonight in the sausage race. Keep your eye on the sausage with the big sombrero, chorizo. <laughs> that is Tim Dillard. Keep an eye on uh, the Italian. Dillard swapping some paint with the Italian on the way in. And the bonus <laughs> there, and down he goes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Face plant. That's going to leave a few marks and a trip to the dry cleaner. What do you think the dry cleaner says when he gets that showing up in the hangar? Rock? Cha ching. <laughs> <laughs> might, might cost a little bit to dry clean that baby. A dirty Italian sausage. All right. Scooter Jeanette leads off, and we are pleased to be joined in the booth now by Brandon Woodruff, the Brewers minor league pitcher of the year. Congratulations, Thank you, sir. sir. Thank you. Well nice done, man. Thank you. What, and Brandon knows Tim. So what's the story again? He lives in Nashville. You're right there in that area. So you guys have a little history together. Well, his um, actually his, his hometown is in South Tillow, Mississippi. And my first spring training last year, I'm you know I'm sitting on his row and I hear him talking and it, you know he mentioned something about South Tillow and I look at him and I said, man, you know I, I live 10 minutes from you, so <laughs> we kind of hit it off right there. And, you know we know a lot of people, so it's. Uh, and he's a hilarious. Hilarious. He's kind of outgoing, isn't he? Unbelievable. Very. very. <laughs> How's your social you media? Yeah. How's your social media game? It's not very good. I'm not. <laughs> I'm. I'm pretty low key on that. So. Just a good old country boy. That's huh? it. Good. I just try to take it easy. Well, congratulations on a great year. If you don't know Brandon's story, it's a tremendous story. I was talking to your pitching coach Chris Hook, who's here in the dugout here. He's uh, with the uh, the Brewers, and he was just raving about you and the kind of. Not just the kind of pitcher you are, 
but the kind of guy you are too and the kind of teammate you were this year and I think for a lot of people you've opened up a lot of eyes and to win 14 games in the minor leagues is really impressive because pitch counts are pretty strict down that's there. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, you know it. It was a very fun year you know you just come out and you you try to give your team a chance to win every time you go out and uh, you know some sometimes it goes good for you but you, you always just want to want to keep your team in the game so that's that was my goal this year and that's that's what I wanted to do. Yeah you led all of baseball and strikeouts this year down in the minor leagues always been a big strikeout guy. Uh, you know not really last year I had a oblique problem that kind of sidelined me for a mm -hmm. little bit and you know this year I knew I had the stuff to strike people out but that, that's not something I think about when I go out I just I just try to go out and, and pound the zone and and give uh, you know my defense quick innings you know try to get them in to let them hit you know that's that's very big try to get those guys some momentum and you know the strikeouts come and uh, you know and this year they obviously they, they came a lot sure so. those numbers are fantastic uh, and forever those numbers are on your baseball card and a part of your history as well and I would imagine and I've talked to a number of minor league players before when you make that jump from single A to double A now you're you're in the game now you're part of the picture and maybe part of the plans do you feel that way yeah uh, of course you know coming in coming into double A you uh, you know that's you always hear that's the big jump and at first you know I scuffled in, in the first couple of starts but then I realized hey you know this this game doesn't change it's, it's the same game it's it's always been played the same and if you can just be consistent enough and, and do it every time out you know good things will work out and I just try to work quick and you know get quick outs and just try to get on mm. the field you know I'm trying to have those quick innings. Yeah what was the biggest adjustment you had to make from uh, Brevard County to uh, double A. Yeah you know once I got to Biloxi I think the biggest thing was just kind of speeding up the delivery and just letting guys know hey I'm I'm coming right after you and uh, I think once they got that sense that I was doing that it. it they start swinging at pitches necessarily that they, they may not shrink, uh, swing at. So you get some uh, bad swings, and you know that that leads to quick innings. So, yeah. well, Brandon, it's great getting to meet you. We're, yes, I sir. got a feeling we're going to get to know you a lot better yes, next sir. spring. Yes, so, sir. congratulations! Thank on you so year. much. I really Thank appreciate you. it, Brandon Woodruff, the Brewers minor league pitcher of the year. Go to the seventh. Oh, that's a sign for you, Rock. It says Rock, we love the book. Yeah. It's not something they're ready to hold up just yet, but I could tell when the time comes, it'll be great. Hey, Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Positive Coaching Alliance and its mission to develop better athletes and better people by working to provide all youth and high school athletes a positive character building sports experience. Visit foxsportsupports.com to learn more. New pitcher for Milwaukee, Rob Scahill. And a 3 1 Reds lead as we play in the seventh inning. Yeah, some good pitching in this game. You know, Straley doing a nice job. The Brewers bullpen. Even uh, Taylor Youngman after that first inning settled down nicely. And Rob Scahill pitched on Tuesday against the Pirates and a three up, three down inning that 
they included a couple of strikeouts. So the Brewers pitching staff continues to be very good. It's a nice long stretch for these guys. Doing a good job. Appreciate our time with Brandon Woodruff, the Brewers minor league pitcher of the year. Tell you what, he's another guy that's got the look of a little star power in him. As Straley bounces to first, you know, some guys come in with presence. They, we've interviewed so many young players, draft picks, and uh, minor league players of the year and whatnot. Two guys we had on tonight kind of command the room a little bit. Isan Diaz and Brandon Woodruff. Right. It's impressive. Yeah, big kids. I mean, uh, Woodruff, good sized kid. I'm looking eye to eye with him, and about 6'3, can bring it. Had a number of different minor league guys over the years that uh, I think all of them have good presence. I mean, they're good kids, and I think that's one of the reasons why they are good athletes. They're disciplined, and I mean, they get it. I think the Brewers do a good job of stressing those types of behaviors. Of course, they have them coming in. I, mean, I think it's one of the mm -hmm. reasons that they draft kids like that, and they have a good sense of themselves. Well, the Brewers were retired quickly during our interview with Brandon, but we can tell you just a couple of things about him. Played his college ball at Mississippi State. He's a Mississippi native. Um, one of the things we didn't get into, and obviously it's a sensitive topic, but uh, Brandon lost his brother this year, tragic accident. And for him to perform like he did and have the kind of year he had, very difficult circumstances this season speaks a lot to his character and then everybody I talk to who knows him well and has seen him pitch they rave about uh, the kind of person that he is and the kind of competitor that he is and dealing with very difficult circumstances this year with his brother uh, his older brother who he looked up to very much and so we certainly Think about him as we get into the off season and you start to get into the holiday seasons and whatnot and yeah, it's going to be tough. a tough tough off season for yeah, Brandon yeah. but glad he could enjoy a moment here today and he had a fantastic year. He was telling us after the interview that he is excited about celebrating the one year anniversary his wedding anniversary is coming up. He was married last November and wanted to say hello to his wife Joni. So we'll do that for Brandon. Hello Joni. And happy anniversary in November. There's a base hit. Peraza singles. Well, so we've met Brandon Woodruff and Asan Diaz. And for more on the young shortstop Diaz, we check in with Sophia. Well, BA and Rock, earlier this season I had the opportunity to go to Appleton and spend some time with Diaz along with Tucker Newhouse and Jake Gatewood who were staying together at the host family of Linda and John Desjardin in Appleton. And uh, it was a great experience. We got to kind of do their game day routine with them, make breakfast, hang out with them in the morning, head over to the ballpark uh, as they did their game day routine. But Eason actually was thoughtful enough to invite Linda and John down here for the game today and even had custom Diaz Brewers jerseys made for his host family. Wow. And I spoke with with Linda and she was so thrilled to be here to just see him at Miller Park to receive this honor and uh, really a th kind gesture of him to invite them down here and they were thrilled to be here. Yeah that's what I'm talking about that's a next level thinker and next level character right there and those host families that was a great report Sophia did I really enjoyed that uh, we had that in the middle of the summer and get a sense of these minor league players and how they're trying to adapt to these these minor league cities and the host family situation in Appleton is unlike any other I think around minor league baseball. Yeah good folks up in the Fox Valley spent a lot of time up there. Actually I was at a game this summer on an off day. It's a nice ballpark up there. There's a line drive base hit Shebler smokes one to left and back to back singles now against Scahill two on with one out. That's a bullet. I mean, this is a Scahill two seam fastball going away. It's a nice piece of hitting right there on the pitch that's on the outside corner and drills it into left. Now well, the Reds all of a sudden with eight hits. Had three hits last inning. So Scahill, the former Pirate. Will match up against Joey Votto. 
And then again, the Brewers in a spot where they're looking for a double play ball to end this inning. They got one last inning. Reds did score off Jacob Barnes, but they had two on and one out, and the double play ended the frame. Joey Votto in the first inning. Two run homer. See where the pitch is. It's up in her half, and Votto hits it out of here. As the game went on, you know, Young was able to get the baseball down. Much better results. Can't get away with a pitch like that to Votto. Line shot foul. Almost same spot. You just wonder what got into Joey Votto in the second half. I mean, he's a guy that would just take pitch after pitch and think nothing of, you know, nothing about being aggressive and all about on base percentage, trying to walk, and all of a sudden now in the second half, he's been very aggressive at the plate. Much different hitter. Wonder what the difference is. It's paid off too, and obviously a decision that he made to hunt hits more. His power numbers are up batting average is up. No kidding. I mean the numbers across the board are fantastic for the year and you think about how bad he was in the month of April and May he was hitting in the low two hundreds when the calendar turned to June first. And here he is sitting at three twenty and an OPS of nine sixty four. Still walks a lot. On base percentage over 430. When he gets a pitch to hit, he's not wasting. He's not letting it go by. One and two, the count. Two two now. Everything inside. You can see where Scahill wants to pitch Votto. He's trying to bust him in. Which can be risky if you miss your spot. Well, you continue to pitch, throw every pitch in there. He's going to start looking in there. You got to mix it up a little bit. Let's see what it do now. Two and two with two on. A little half swing. Look out. Almost wiped out the Reds' bat boy. A Schinberger was headed his way. He's all right. I'm good, Joey. I think they're quite used to that with Joey Votto. <laughs> I think so. You now with two strikes, he does that a lot. Just tries to fight off tough pitches. Sorry, kid. My fault. Just trying to get a hit. Just working here. Again. Yeah. Now he's taking aim over at Billy Hatcher, the third base coach. That's about as close to bunting. Eight ball as you can get. That's a pepper swing. Nobody plays pepper anymore. Not allowed. Got to stay off the grass. You know what? I saw a pepper game, believe it or not. The uh, the Dodgers. So Dave Roberts, their manager. He wanted Jock Peterson to start playing pepper. He wanted him to start to feel the bat and bat control. And yeah, they were out in the outfield. I, I hadn't seen a pepper game in I don't know how long. 15 years maybe. Explain what pepper is. Well, you get a couple of guys and you know out, and one guy with the bat, and you're about what, ten feet away. Mm -hmm. You kind of flip uh, the baseball to the hitter, and you just kind of concentrate, hitting line drives, maybe one hoppers back to the guys, and you know the pepper game transformed into the flip game. I think that's one of the reasons yeah. why they did away with it. Guys get hurt doing flip. You flip the ball out of your glove, and you try and smoke it off somebody's chest. <laughs> Runners go, and Votto draws the walk. And now the bases are loaded. So I think they did away with the temptation to go from pepper to flip. There were a few broken noses, I think. Broken noses, you know, chins, and <laughs> there were some crazy flip players in my day. Pepper is a great game. You know, he was one of the worst flip players. I mean, I mean, he was good, but he was dangerous. Was Jim Ned, Ned Yost. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. You know what he used to do? He used to get a regular glove and put tongue depressors in the fingers. Yeah. To make it a little bit stiffer and you yeah, can just right. smoke like, somebody. Like paddle ball. Yeah. 
Gumby always cheated. Did he? Not Just grab actually, it with his bare hand. You're not supposed to actually squeeze the baseball. <laughs> he would do that. He'd catch it, squeeze it, and then kind of flip it on your knees. It was a pop foul out of play by Duvall. When you flipped it to somebody, it had to it had to be above the knees. Below the knees, and you're out of the game. First guy out of the game is the judge. And back in those days, you don't want to be judged. When I first got called up right. with, you know, Buki and Raleigh and you know Jamie Easterly and guys like that, Don Money. <laughs> They'd make you cry. <laughs> you made sure you keep it below the knees. <laughs> Above. Above the knees. There's a strike. Going to the count. So there's all you need to know about the pepper and uh, flip. I highly recommend any youth player out there to learn how to play pepper with your friends. You can do it with a wiffle ball. You can do it with a baseball in small quarters. It's a really good game for back control and quickness of hand, of the glove hand eye coordination Hand eye, yeah that's the big thing. Yeah it's great. O2 pitch. One and two now. As long as you don't take a full swing with a guy 10 feet away you just kind of punch the ball with your bat. Like Joey Votto did when he's fouling pitches off. All right. It's a pepper swing. And never play with Ned Yost. It's the golf equivalent of working on your short game. You don't take a full swing, you just do a little chipping and it'll help you. You'll be amazed. Right off the end of the bat, a cue shot. Scahill thought about the plate, does a pirouette and gets the out at first. Yeah, Perez got a good jump. No chance to get him at home. Be an RBI on a ground out. Duval picks up a ribby. Four to one Reds. Yeah, right off the end of the bat, a little squibber. He thought about it for a second. Good thing he didn't go to home. Would not have gotten it out there. So the Reds have scored in each of the last two innings. They have runners at second and third with two outs now. And Brandon Phillips coming up. Gets jammed, a pop up. Arcia is back. And that will retire the side. So Cincinnati scores another one. Brewers are down three. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Stretch time in Milwaukee. Second inning, put the Brewers on the board. The lone run on the board right now. And Santana now with double digit home runs. He missed so much time with the two injuries the shoulder and the elbow injury. But here he is with 10 homers on the Powerball home run leaderboard. And that's the only run of the game thus far. 
Santana leads off. Straley coming off a nine pitch inning and first pitch swinging is Santana. At the plate presented by Wendy's. One out of two tonight. Other at bat, a strikeout. You see guys like Dan Straley and Zach Davies in this series, and there are more and more pitchers cropping up. They aren't the hard throwers, the plus velocity throwers, but they're really good pitchers, and they're reinventing themselves and using all the information that is available, the analysis, such as spin rate, how to pitch up in the zone, and the percentages to those numbers for players with swings and misses or you can kind of see where home run numbers come depending on pitch location. And more and more there's an emphasis on changing speeds and throwing change ups. It's the way it should go. Yeah. It's a, it's a pitch that's easy on your arm and. You know, as far as starting pitchers I mean they're, they're, it's not the league is not full of guys like Noah Syndergaard throwing. You know 98 miles an hour all the time changing speeds moving the uh, eyesight around and. The real art of pitching, the craft of it, where you're having to be a great thinker. And I think there is a wave coming, Rock. I don't know if you've seen it, but it feels like because of all of the injuries, players are wanting to stay healthy and they know they're going to have to change. Santana pops up to Phillips, who makes it look easy. But it feels like there's a wave coming in that direction, and that would be great for the game. Because it does a couple of things. Not only does it allow pitchers to go deeper in games, the game has a better tempo, a better pace. There's more action in the game because balls are put in play more often. And you're keeping players on the field longer. It's minimizing the pitching. Our buddy Matt Vasgersian doing the Fox game today had a had a stat, it just blew my mind that in September. Major League Baseball is averaging so games are in particular games they're averaging over nine pitchers per game <laughs> in September yeah and it's a high number leading up to the month of September and we're starting to get it obviously there is the matchup game with relievers but changes when you get a starter who like Straley or like Zach Davies or even Junior Guerra working fast and throwing strikes and but you can't just do that. That's easy to say. You can't just work fast and throw strikes. Right. And that's it. There's way more to it. Because if you're not truly pitching and changing speeds and moving the ball in and out, and you can work as fast as you want. Yeah. And, and more importantly, I think throwing pitches that aren't really tough on your arm. Pena sends one deep to left. That is off the base of the wall, maybe on a hop. And Pena's into second base with a double. So there you go. It's a hit for the Brewers and Manny Pena with a one out double. And Australia makes a mistake with a fastball up. You can see Manny trying to level it off. He does that and hits it over the head of Duvall, a one out double. On a fastball, low 90s. And Brewers need to get some runs in a hurry here. Yeah, but that's the tissue you were talking about. Nine pitchers in September. I would have thought it would be more. I think nine pitchers pretty much average throughout the year. Yeah. I mean, when you have ten relievers in your bullpen, well, you know, seven, eight, nine guys. I mean, not ten, but you know, the Brewers were working with eight relievers just about all year mm -hmm. and had no problem going with four or five relievers a night. That's what it feels like, right? Every game we we call and we're here. Every night doing these games, and and you're seeing three, four, five relievers in a game. Even on the old lineup sheets they produce, there are now seven spaces for relievers. <laughs> and I think, you know, the trend we're starting to see more and more of now is starting pitchers. If you're not an elite level guy, you're being asked to go two th two times through the batting order. However deep that'll take you. And any sign of trouble third time through, see ya. See ya. 
Now you get into the bullpen. So that basically means you're getting into the bullpens in the fifth, sixth inning, sometimes the seventh. You've got to really be efficient to get into the seventh. Garcia fouls one back. One and two the count. And all that with the pitchers has a bit of a trickle down effect, right? When you have seven, eight relievers in your bullpen, all of a sudden now your bench players have to be very versatile. It never was like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have guys, not like Perez, but you have to have a guy that can play the outfield, play the infield, or have a guy that can catch, play first, maybe throw him in the outfield. You got to have that on your bench. Because you only have four guys, four or five guys maybe on your bench. Arcia in the center. And Shebler will make the catch. That'll be the second out. Pena stays put at second base. Oh yeah. Frozen cotton candy. Out of way, kid. Make your own dreams come true. <laughs> What's he doing? Well, he's he's creating his own masterpiece there with the cotton candy. Yeah, he's got dipping his finger in water, right? Wetting it down. Was he kind of making a bird's nest? I think so. <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> it's gone now. <laughs> yeah, we're spying on you. That's what you think about this weekend, right? Kids coming to the ballpark and fans coming to the ballpark. And that's going to end tomorrow. Fan appreciation weekend this weekend. Final home game of the year tomorrow. Kind of sad in a way. Close down Miller Park. It is. Won't see you again until next season, April of next season. Michael Reed takes a ball. Always amazed coming to the ballpark every day. Seeing this field in immaculate condition. Just the awe of this ballpark in general, the roof, the architecture of it, the big leagues. And then today we get a chance to hang out with. Bob Euchre and Marty Brenneman Hall of Fame broadcasters and Hank Aaron comes in the booth with us. As Reed draws the walk. And then we get to meet a couple of guys part of the Brewers future as well. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Great day. Hey reminder that tomorrow the Brewers will host their first ever give back game here at Miller Park nearly all ticket proceeds from the crew's Final home game of the season will be donated to four Milwaukee charities. Go to Brewers.com slash give back to learn more and how you can get involved. I think Aaron involved in that, the Boys and Girls Club. So Straley has finally been chased. The Brewers now with two on. Get to him here in the seventh inning with two outs. Four to one Reds. We have a pitching change. We'll set up the new hurler right after this.
another successful start for him. He exits the game surrendering just five hits and one run at this point. Does have two runners that are his responsibility. Five strikeouts for Straley. And the new pitcher rock will be Michael Lorenzen out of the Cincinnati bullpen. He'll face a pinch hitter in Hernan Perez. Yeah, good work out of the bullpen for Lorenzen. 33rd appearance this year in a 296 ERA. And Lorenzen almost as many strikeouts as innings pitched. And basically keeps the ball in the ballpark. Perez trying to change all that. Long ball here would tie this game up. Hernan Perez, normally a starter, coming off the bench to pinch hit. Yeah, Lorenzen's last appearance was at Chicago on Wednesday, and inning in two thirds gave up three runs. See the way he digs that finger into the baseball, throws a spike curve ball. Very similar to Jimmy Nelson. There's a fastball low at 95, and it's one and one to Perez. Just three hits as a pinch hitter this season. Perez has played his way in, into an everyday role. He's usually in the lineup. Reds bullpen. Has struggled all season long. So the Brewers finally get to him. They are dead last in losses and walks and home runs allowed and second to last in ERA as a bullpen. And only the Arizona Diamondbacks have a higher bullpen ERA in the National League. Well, Lorenzen has fallen behind three and one now, puts Perez in the driver's seat. And a strike. <laughs> Runners go this time and a swing and a foul. Everyone almost hit him. Swung at it, fouled it off. He didn't. It might have hit him. That was way inside. He's got some good velocity and some movement. Two seamer. Look out. Runners will start. Full count, two outs. Lorenzen deals and a strikeout to end the inning. Chased one, chased ball four. So it is four to one red still, and we go to the eighth inning.
eighth inning from Miller Park. And our Miller Lite what's on tap. We got Tim Edelman on the mound tomorrow for Cincinnati. Willie Peralta gets the ball for the Brewers in the last home game of the season. It's fitting. Willie Peralta was the opening day pitcher. And he'll pitch the last home game of the year tomorrow. So 12:30 airtime, 110 first pitch. Brewers Reds on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Brewers find themselves trailing by three as we go to the eighth inning. There's Willie. Says I'm ready to go tomorrow. Yeah, Willie was good last time out <laughs> against the Cubs. A three to one win. <laughs> Went six innings. All smiles. Reason to smile. Of course, he doesn't need a reason to smile. He's always smiling. Now he's saying in a very smiley way, "Get the camera off me." Take two. <laughs> Take four. You should be happy. There's no cameras on you in the minor leagues. That's that's the truth. Right. There's no Woody in the minor leagues right. shooting He's in the dugout. Sitting in the big league dugout. Cameras on you. There he is. And Sof on Sophia. Sophia. With the worst view in baseball, right Sophia's, behind Woody. I think Sophia's eating some of those sweetest fish that uh, Augie was uh, chomping on the other day. Is that accurate, what? Sophia? M and M's tonight, guys, not uh, Swedish fish. But thanks what. to Woody, Woody always provides the snacks down here. Yes, yeah, snacks. Is that that's what you call it? <laughs> Late night dinner. I don't know if we're going with snacks on that. <laughs> There's a spinner in there for a strike. Blaine Boyer. The next man up for the Brewers. They've gone deep into their bullpen here tonight. You need to send Sophia some of those uh, those almonds that you eat. <laughs> There's a little flare in the right, a base hit. Raw, no flavor, no salt, right. no nothing. So why do you say it like that? Because they taste horrible. But you eat it. You eat them now. No, I don't. It's not true. Not the ones you have. They're good and good for you, partner. Sawdust. But they have to be good for you. Why else would you eat them? <laughs> well, we can go with M and M's, or we can go with almonds. Right, you're right. Or Swedish fish. Erdan Iribarren at the plate. Iri Barron with a base hit tonight getting the start in right field. He's one for three. Had a couple of years in Milwaukee, 08 and 09. You might remember the name. Not only did he play for the Brewers, but he was also involved in that national anthem standoff, the comedic version with uh, Manny Pena. It was a pretty funny scene in Cincinnati. All the teams, both teams lined up to to uh, do the national anthem, and Eric Barron got in the standoff. Here's a double play chance. Yes. 4 6 3 double play. It was interesting timing, too, because it's, it's right in the middle of the national anthem controversy that's going on. And <laughs> then you look down, and there's Pena and Eric Barron, two guys from Venezuela. Matter of fact, they're from the same town in Venezuela. And Finally, the home plate umpire says, get off the field. And Pena had to leave, and Erie Barron won the standoff. And that's not a win. Jordan Baker could have easily looked over at Erie Barron and told him to leave. That's right. He went for the visitor first. He played favorites is what he did. And uh, Jordan didn't seem to be too pleased. I mean, <laughs> wasn't playing along, was he? <laughs> he snapped at him. Of course, he's uh, six seven, so I guess when he speaks, you better move. I enjoyed that moment. It happens every now and then in the big leagues. Spontaneous thing. The national anthem standoff and <laughs> operative word stand. That's right. Tucker Barnhard with two away. He is 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. Bounced into a double play last time up. Strike three, and the inning is over. And Boyer makes a quick one out of the Reds in the eighth. Brewers are coming up, running out of outs tonight. Down three runs.
fired up here. Brewers trail four to one. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. We're getting set for Brewers live post game coming up after the ball game, of course. And uh, Jonathan VR set to lead off this inning for Milwaukee. Took the Major League stolen base lead earlier in this game with 59. Hamilton with the Reds, of course, not here. But uh, that'd be quite an accomplishment to hang on to that. Yeah, and it's quite, you know, he's done it right from the beginning when you talk about what he's done for the ball club. We all know the impact he's had in the field and what he's done at the bat. But on base is really making a big difference. Getting now the lead in the National League. It's done a nice job for the Brewers. All right, let's see what he can do right now to lead off the eighth inning. Again, Brewers live coming up after the ball game, B.A. All right, thanks, Craig and Augie. And here is Jonathan VR to start it. Drops a bunt down. And runs and will make the play for the out. Well, Rockets Fan Appreciation Weekend. We just had a gentleman win a car, a Chevy Cruze. Yeah, sweet, huh? His uh, number was called, and he's been whisked off to the tax man, I suppose, to settle up. <laughs> no, congratulations. There he is. That guy just won a car for showing that, up to huh? a Brewers game. A new car. That's a good way to Heck yeah. end a home schedule. How was the Brewers game? Oh, it was great. Had a hot dog and got to see Hank Aaron on the big board. And I won a car. <laughs> and the Brewers had a big ninth inning comeback. Good comeback. That's a cool moment. We've had some fun tonight. Interviewed the Brewers minor league pitcher and players of the year tonight. We had Hank Aaron on with us. Tim Dillard ran in the sausage race. I'm sure he'll be posting something on social media about that. He played a little rough though. If did it uh, did he win. He did not win and he actually I think he finished second looked pretty close and then he. Kind of got a little physical with Italian. He dropped Italian to the ground today. So Dim Tillard on Twitter. Incidental contact. Mm, I don't know about that. Seemed a little dicey. Jeanette chops one foul. We're having a lot of fun with Tim Dillard, man. He's he is a star in the making. He's producing all these videos and he did one today which was a, a, a mock up of the opening to Saturday Night Live and we were in it we made a cameo in it <laughs> remember when he was in the booth yeah. the other day and he told us to just turn around and do a thumbs up I didn't know what he was doing at goofy yeah so now he's got this whole thing including Bob Euchre is it uh I have not seen it. It's on Twitter. It's on Twitter. It's on Instagram. His name on Twitter. You can do a Tim Dillard search, but it's actually Dim Tillard. He's been a lot of fun. Two-two pitch. And Jeanette hanging tough. That's right off his foot. Yikes. Is that cut fastball going down just a little bit right off the inside of the foot. That padding's not going to help too much on that. Ankle bone. Connected to the shin bone. Yeah, he's still trying to shake it off. 4 1 Reds. Two run homer in the first by Votto. Reds added runs in the sixth and the seventh. And a base hit. Scooter Jeanette will reach. And doing a nice job staying back. We're going to get another breaking pitch. And uh, Jeanette able to wait back. Got it down on the end a little bit, but kept the bat in the hitting zone long enough to get good wood on it. It seemed like Vida when he dove, he went right over the top of it. So that'll bring Ryan Braun to the plate now. Brewers trying to cut into this deficit. Braun stands in there with a hit tonight, hitting 307 on the year. 
awesome. Good round numbers right there. 30 homers, 90 RBIs. Top 10 in the league in hitting. Bronze on the Powerball home run leaderboard with 30. Chris Carter is the club leader and second in the National League. He is two off the mark. Nolan Arenado is the pace setter with the Rockies with 40. Seven games to play after this ball game tonight. Boy, Lorenzen's got that down and in fastball going tonight. We had 96 that last pitch. That's a pitch that Perez struck out on. You see, holds it with the seams and goes down quite a bit, way off the inside corner. There it is again. Velocity and movement. Yeah. When you get swings like that, it's like that Jeffers fastball. Jeremy's back with the Rangers, by the way. We wish him luck. Hopefully, he can come back and get things turned around in his life. Starting to throw again. Went through a rehab, alcohol rehab process. And so, we're thinking about Jeremy and hope he can get it going. I'm not sure if he's going to pitch again or if he's going to be able to. Ratchet it back up to pitch for the Rangers in the postseason, but more importantly, trying to get his life together, you know, trying to get his life back yeah. put together, which by all reports are that he has started the process to do, which is good news. And you hope he's able to do it now because you don't get an unlimited amount of chances. Jeremy's a great guy and he wants to do right. We know that about him. Good battle here with Ryan Braun and Michael Lorenzen. Everything down on his own. Hasn't made a mistake up. Ryan's looking for one. And he fights another one off. The sixth pitch of the at bat. That was a curveball that time. The highest of the pitches that Lorenzen's thrown to him. He's got Ryan talking to himself. Ryan has reestablished himself as one of the elite hitters in the game this season. Then he wondering if he could get back to this level. Back injury, a thumb injury. There's a called strike three. Braun knew it. Fastball surprised him. And Braun is out. Two outs in the inning. The second strikeout for Lorenzen. Yeah, right on the inside corner. You can see all the pitches from Lorenzen. Nothing really. Over the plate. I mean, everything on the edges and down. So here is Carter now with a runner at first. Reds will have nine, one, and two coming up in the ninth. Carter trying to extend this eighth. Two and one. Carter had a good cut, but he was a little bit late. That's the cut fastball of Lorenzen. Everything moving right, nothing straight. I guess the straightest pitch he's thrown was that strike three pitch to Braun. And it fooled him. Two balls and a strike on Carter. Check on the runner at first. Jeanette with a single with one out. 
Brewers did have two on last inning but that came with two outs and Lorenzen struck out Hernan Perez to end the threat. Three and one now to Carter. Close pitch. Boy, where'd that miss? That was just about right down the middle. Number four. I mean, really? <laughs> it's a ball. <laughs> he called it a ball. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a break. <laughs> and Carter cuts and misses at that one. I guess it wasn't exactly down the middle, which Not is why he probably called it out of strike zone. <laughs> It's been a long year for these umpires too. <laughs> they can see the finish line themselves. Yep. I'm guessing that's going to be a demerit. <laughs> Full count, runner goes, and Carter fouls it away. So you're saying that one's not in the gray area? There is a gray area that umpires don't get dinged on. I don't know. It's hard to find it. It's not an easy job by any stretch. No, every night. They do get some time off, which they deserve. No home ballpark, always on the road. They're entitled to miss a few. Gives Carter a chance. Jeanette goes. Carter lifts it in the air. Back in the grass is Peraza, and the inning is over. Having some fun at Miller Park despite the scoreboard <laughs> on Fan Appreciation Week weekend. Yeah, kid, you do it. Getting all busy and having fun and that a boy. Brewers baseball tonight on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Saturday night Miller Park and we're coming to the finish line here ninth inning. Reds up four to one. And look who's on the mound here partner. And Michael Blazer getting an opportunity he made some. Had some simulated games on the recent road trip for the Brewers and wasn't sure if he was going to be able to go down the mound but. It will be good for Blaze to get into some real live activity, and the Brewers want to see him as well. So, Blaze was having a terrific season going until he had those arm problems and has struggled since. Blaze on the mound for the first time in the big league since August 13th, which was a game against Cincinnati. He gave up four runs in an inning and was put on the disabled list shortly thereafter. Blazek was going along so well. His earned run average was 2-3-1 toward the end of May, and that's when the problem started to arise. So his ERA right now at 5.58, not indicative of how good he was pitching for the Brewers, and it's too bad. But the Brewers are glad to get him back. They feel strongly about Blazek as a late inning high leverage reliever. And to get him 
back on the mound now not just good for the organization but I'm sure checks off a box for Blazik as well there's a line drive out Levon de Jesus Junior the pinch hitter is retired and one away in the ninth. Let's check in on Sophia she's got more on Michael Blazik. Yeah to follow up on that they said that it was really the final hurdle for him to throw a couple of those uh, simulated innings and so Craig Council says the main goal for Blazik was just to get him into the offseason healthy but added that they do want to get him into some game action if anything just for that confidence on Blazik's part that his arm feels good he can see game action heading into the offseason and just get him uh, with some confidence and Blazik told me that having gone through the arm injury he feels as good now as he did at the start of spring training so he feels really good with that and uh, certainly wants to finish this season strong with as many appearances as he can. Yeah, That's a great call and confidence is an important thing and you don't want a player wavering with that confidence sitting there the entire offseason. And I'm sure he'll regardless of what happens here knowing that he's gone through the rehab he's gotten back to a healthy position. He'll feel good about getting into what would be a normal offseason for him where he can stop it down rebuild it up and then get ready for spring training. Yeah, because if you don't ever get an opportunity to get back out on the mound all winter long you're just wondering how's it going to feel when I get out there so. He gets an opportunity here tonight maybe one more time on a road trip. There's a walk to Peraza. One out walk. And had a base runner for the Reds with Scott Shebler coming up. Shebler hit a bullet last time up. Line drive single. He's two for four today. Taylor Youngman started the game. He's on the hook for the loss. Gave up a two run home run to Joey Votto in the first, and then he settled down and he pitched well. Four innings today for Youngman. And the Brewers have been using a reliever per inning since the fifth. Well, Brewers have used six, so that Matt Vaskersian stat, how's that coming along? <laughs> It's going to move it into the plus. Runner goes and a base hit. Shebler lines one into right field. And Peraza on his way to third. Shebler into second with a double. That's his a good third hit of the game. Good deke out there by Arcia. Had Peraza sliding into second base. Probably wouldn't have been able to score anyway, but Peraza's into third base. On another hard hit baseball by Shebler, the left handed hitter. Check out VR. Look at his though he's going to catch the baseball. Has him sliding. Good job. <laughs> Just that little movement there. Well, it takes. Might have saved a run. You never know. Better didn't look in, so he doesn't know where the baseball is. So first and third now with one out, and they're going to walk Joey Votto to load the bases. Tyler Cravey was the first reliever used. He went a scoreless inning with a strikeout. Jacob Barnes gave up a run in his inning. Rob Scahill allowed a run in an inning. Boyer pitched last inning. And even though he gave up a hit, he got a double play ball, faced his three batters, and now blazing. All right, so Votto draws the intentional pass. And now the bases are loaded for Adam Duvall, the Reds' best home run hitter, their cleanup hitter. And we'll see if Blazik has enough to get through this mess. Reds could put the game away right here.
Brewers are set up to turn a double play up the middle. They'll try to turn two and get out of the inning. Might see VR try to come home. There's a swing and a miss. Good breaking ball by Michael Blazik. Yeah, when he was going good, he had that curveball and slider really down and on the corners. There's a slider that, like Duvall tried to pull, pulled off of it. Another wave and a miss. Back to back breaking balls from Blazik, and he's got him in the hole 0 and 2. Blazik from the stretch deals and Maybe reach back for a little extra on the fastball. Fastball velocity is not back, certainly, missing that much time. Not that his fastball velocity is something that he's concerned about. He still throws 93, 94 miles an hour, but Blazik, when he's right, is in the mid to upper 90s. Ground ball. RC is over. He's got it. Backhanded to Jeanette, who dropped the ball. Oh, my goodness. The Brewers had a chance at a double play. Instead, a run scores, and everybody is safe. Right, that was a really quick feed over to Jeanette. I think he was surprised at how quick it got to him. Watch how quick that ball's out of his glove and on its way. That's a perfect flip. He just misses it. And it probably would have been a double play had he kept it in the glove. That's a beautiful play by Arcia. Perfect flip. Just missed by Jeanette. Probably going to be an error. You could see that Jeanette was trying to hunt for the bag with his feet. And he looked down at the wrong moment. Well, that is a huge mistake. And now it's five to one. And here's Brandon Phillips. That'll be an E4 on Jeanette. He's had a couple of errors in the last two games like that. I don't know if it's a concentration issue or. Yeah, missed a throw over from VR last mm -hmm. night from at third base. Third to second. And Scooter wasn't able to make the catch. Ended up charging him an error. Those are normally pretty routine plays for Scooter. Out of character for him. Foul ball out of play. But a nice shovel pass, backhand shovel pass from Arcia right on the bag. Kid's impressive, it's short. Gives you that glimpse into a guy that is going to save a lot of runs. Just love the way he plays the game. A lot of enthusiasm on the left side of that infield right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, VR, Arcia. Be interesting to see how that Brewer infield is going to look going into spring training. Brewers have a lot of decisions to make about where his players are going to be positioned. You know, Arcia is going to be the shortstop. He'll get first dibs on that job. In the right field, hit well. Santana makes a catch. This is going to bring in another run. And the Reds are up 6 1 on a sack fly by Brandon Phillips. Second out of the inning. So Eugenio Suarez now two hits and a walk tonight has also driven in a run first and third with two away Blazik back on the mound first time since August 13th. 
Hoping for a nice clean inning to get him through it, but got to grind his way through, which is not a bad thing to have to deal with either. Arcia will make the call, and he's got it. Pulled his Kelly Leak impression right there. And the Reds score twice. Tough inning. Blazik is out. Good to see him back on the hill, though. Yeah, Battalion took a spill tonight. Tim Dillard running his chorizo, swapping a little paint, dropped him. <laughs> Fan appreciation weekend at Miller Park, and the Brewers down 6 1 to the Reds. Bottom of the ninth inning, and Rysel Iglesias is on the mound, and this guy is worth the price of admission here. Yeah, he's got nasty stuff. He does the arm angle, and I'm laughing because you see the nose on Battalion <laughs> crushed in on the side. <laughs> Crushed in, dirty. <laughs> oh boy. Nothing like it. There's a fastball. Iglesias is an emerging closer. And the Reds tried him as a starting pitcher, but I think they're content with having him finish games now, and he's about as wicked as it gets in the league. Yeah, the only problem you have with this guy is he can't really throw a lot. I mean, he, normally when he pitches, he gets a day off, maybe two. They have him extended, maybe an inning or two innings. 33rd appearance for the hard thrower. I mean, he's tough. Arm angles, good stuff. 75 strikeouts in 72 in the third innings. Manny Pena. And if you're going to close, you have to be able to pitch at least back to back days. Well, one thing the Reds do or are con contemplating, and we've seen it this year as well, he did it against the Brewers, but instead of pitching in back to back games, the Reds are using him multiple innings. Right. And so we saw that in Cincinnati, and that's that'd be a little interesting twist. It'd be a change to the modern game, but it's something that, or the current game, as Pena pops up. But Rock, that's kind of the way it was. You know, when you came up to the big leagues, there was that multi inning save, and, you know, going back into the evolution of the closer, you think about Raleigh Fingers and the multi inning saves and Goose Gossage, mm -hmm. you know, two and a third. Eckersley was the guy who started yeah, the one right. inning save with LaRusa. That's kind of where that trend began with Dennis Eckersley. But prior to that, you saw a lot of closers go multiple innings, and that's. An avenue the Reds are willing to explore with Iglesias. Which is why a 20 save season back then was a pretty good year. Because you're going two innings plus for a save. 
And just looking at it from a competition standpoint, if you're the opponent and a starter goes seven and Iglesias comes in for two, that's how you shorten a game because this guy, I mean, hitters will tell you, he's one of the toughest guys to hit in the big leagues. And he's making this look easy right now. Two outs, nine pitches. Pitch number 10 is a sweeping slider, and it's one and two on Arcia. We'll do it tomorrow once again. The Brewers and the Reds, final game of the series, final home game of the year here at Miller Park. And that's it. Ball game is over. Iglesias. Carves up the Brewers in the ninth and the Reds win. They guarantee a season series victory over Milwaukee with that one. 6 1, the final score. The Brewers will try to win this series with a victory tomorrow afternoon here at Miller Park. Time for Brewers Live. We send it out to Craig Kishon. He's with Jerry Augustine. Brewers Live starts right now. Take it away, Craig. Okay, B.A., thanks very much. Yep, Brewers, not a whole lot of offense outside of that Santana home run tonight. Straley doing the job. will break down what he did against Milwaukee. Plus, Youngman's first start since April. How did it go? Augie will let us know when we come back to Brewers Live postgame.